Hi everybody, it's Amy Berger here again. Um, this video is just a quick follow-up to my previous video that was about fasting on ketogenic or low-carb diets. Um, it's pretty funny that I specifically mentioned that I didn't really have a lot of brain fog and I felt like I was always mentally sharp and yet I totally forgot to address this huge, huge important issue that I'm going to get into in this video. Um, but I'm going to chalk that up not to brain fog, I'm going to chalk that up to just wanting to keep the video short and that video was already like 23 minutes and I, I really want to keep these to like 10 minutes clearly that is not happening so well anyway if this outfit looks familiar it's because i'm recording this only a couple minutes after i recorded the other one so um today i want to talk about something called autophagy um you'll hear this pronounced different ways but it's aut I, I think it's pronounced autophagy it is spelled a-u-t-o-p-h-a-g-y so you can think of it as autophagy which translates to self-eating auto means self phagy is eating if you've ever heard the word macrophage um that's big eater so that's like the the type of white blood cell that comes and gobbles up particles of bacteria viruses what have you um, it's a big eater so autophagy autophagy is self-eating and this is um, a pretty big reason why some people do fasting even when they're not on a ketogenic diet not on a low carb diet although keto and low carbon autophagy tend to go hand in hand for a lot of people with specific medical conditions now um, every blog post that i write has a little disclaimer at the bottom that i am not a doctor to it nutrition is not a medical service none of this is a you know medical advice to diagnose treat cure or prevent any illness so please know that that goes for every video i ever make i'm a nutritionist i'm not a physician um, but just speaking as to what i know about this and what i've learned a lot of people incorporate fasting into their ketogenic or low carb life when they are trying to use it as an adjunct therapy i emphasize adjunct adjunct therapy not a standalone but as an addition to whatever other conventional treatments and therapies they might be using for things like cancer parkinson's disease multiple sclerosis als um alzheimer's so a lot of neurological and neurodegenerative conditions and cancer and the reason people use fasting is because of this concept of autophagy a lot of um these neurodegenerative disorders specifically alzheimer's and parkinson's are associated with and that's a loaded term but they come along with misfolded proteins so um proteins not to get too geeky they have a three-dimensional structure and if there's errors or problems in the the like primary structure then the secondary tertiary and quaternary the the second third and and fourth order of how these things how these proteins are folded and come together are affected and in order for proteins to work properly in the body they have to have the right shape and structure if they are misfolded they don't function properly they might build up they might accumulate like they do in alzheimer's in alzheimer's the misfolded proteins are called beta amyloid in uh, parkinson's you'll hear it called alpha synuclein or um, lewy bodies there's something called lewy body dementia again all misfolded proteins that are sort of misbehaving getting into places they're not supposed to get to and not being cleared away properly by the body Body. so it seems to be that when we fast this autophagy process is up regulated meaning it happens more it happens more effectively more efficiently whatever you want to call it um, so that there might be some sort of therapeutic benefit to someone that has one of these conditions that is associated with these you know misbehaving proteins and I say associated with because I know um, if you've watched any of my videos on Alzheimer's they're not on this they might be on the additional videos on this channel that I've, I've linked to but if you go on on YouTube and search for Amy Berger Alzheimer's I've done a lot of videos on on Alzheimer's and I know for a fact on Alzheimer's that the um the beta amyloid proteins are not necessarily causing the disease they occur with it because of other biochemical processes that are going awry and the misfolded protein or the the protein that's not clearing properly isn't causing the disease it's building up because of that nevertheless it can still get into trouble so we want to get rid of it and fasting appears to help the body get rid of it and the same might be true in parkinson's um to be honest i haven't seen a lot of research quantifying fasting and autophagy the clearance of these proteins the you know maybe the reduction in, in synthesis in, even of these proteins i don't know i haven't seen a lot of human research 
you know, saying this much fasting, like fasting for this many days or weeks causes autophagy to upregulate this much or causes this many proteins to be, you know, cleared or dealt with. I don't really know if that research even exists, but certainly at least clinically doctors that work with patients with these problems have reported benefits from fasting. Um, cancer is, is a unique beast. Um, and again, I'm not a physician emphasizing this is not medical advice. I'm just sharing with you things that I've learned, things that I've seen along the way. Um, a lot of the oncologists that support the use of ketogenic diets as again, adjunct therapies for cancer, not standalone, but as an addition to a cancer protocol, um, a lot of them encourage the patients to fast, you know, not, not if they're underweight or frail, like I said in the previous video, um, then fasting is really contraindicated, but especially if someone is overweight or obese, um, and has cancer, fasting can be very helpful. Fasting can help in normal weight people. And part of that has to do with, um, again, bringing the, the glucose down almost as low as possible, bringing the insulin down as low as possible because cancer, there's a lot of debate, there's a lot of controversy over this, but one thing we know is that cancer cells thrive on glucose. Um, and they thrive on glutamine, which is an amino acid. They can thrive on numerous fuels, but they are especially known to, to light up like Christmas trees when they get glucose, literally light up. This is why they diagnose cancer and, and assess the progression with a PET scan. Um, they inject you with a radio label glucose that they can detect on the scan and the, the cancer cells and the tumors suck it up and light up that scan. Um, so there's, there's a lot of... The rationale for limiting glucose and limiting carbohydrate and fasting, limiting all calories, specifically in the situation of cancer, is multifactorial. It's not just bringing down the glucose and insulin. There might be a role for more elevated ketones, um, higher, I, I wanna say higher glucagon, but that's not true because higher glucagon would cause more glucose to be made internally. But um, the point is, this is a, a major reason why some people incorporate fasting into their life that I didn't mention before. and. Again, I don't know that um, we have any hard data on the actual clinical effects. Like, do we do we have numbers on that? I don't know. But um, there's been plenty of anecdotes with people being help, helped by this. And so I think, I don't think we can say that everybody has to do it or everybody should do it, but it should probably be presented as an option. Physicians, therapists, whoever should educate the patients on the potential mechanisms and emphasizing potential, emphasizing this might help, it could help. All you can do is try and we see how it goes. Um, and, you know, fasting, something I didn't mention last time is that fasting is intended to mimic the the, the effects of caloric restriction, right? Because a lot of the longevity studies that have been done in mice and fruit flies and whatever are calorie restriction studies. They're not fasting studies. And like Dr. Fung says, and I, I, I love this, um, this sort of explanation that he uses, restricting some calories all the time is different from restricting all, all calories some of the time. Did I say that right? I think I might've just said that wrong. Let me see. Restricting some calories all the time is different from restricting all calories some of the time. So meaning eating very few calories all the time, every day, week in, week out, year in, year out is different than eating nothing, restricting all calories every couple of days or every couple of weeks. Um, I do think the metabolic and biological effects of those are different, which is why fasting doesn't seem to induce some of the negative hormonal effects and negative effects on like lowering metabolic rate that we do see in extended calorie restriction. Um, but I don't wanna get too deep in the weeds on that. What I would like to say also about um, uh, fasting is that, you know, even with autophagy and how important that process seems to be, autophagy happens all the time. It's not like your body never gets rid of, of old proteins, old worn out proteins. And I should have said earlier, when I mean self-eating the autophagy, it's basically when your body reuses and recycles and gets rid of old worn out malfunctioning cellular bits you know, protein structures, whatever. It can recycle them. It can use those amino acids for other things. Um, it can just get rid of them. We can excrete in, in waste. Um, but this, this process goes on all the time. We know it does because if it didn't, you would never heal from any injury ever, right? If you had um, a bruise or a scar, a cut, a, a broken bone, you would never heal. 
um, the, the damage would be done and, and old tissue would just be there all the time. Um, and this isn't, this isn't what we see, you know, it definitely, the body heals, the body clears out, the body regenerates, you get a paper cut and, and it goes away, you heal and that old tissue is done away with and it's replaced with new tissue. So this happens all the time. I don't want anyone to think that, you know, they're never healing, they're never doing autophagy. The studies, um, I've, I've even heard some of the experts say that we don't have clear data on precisely when autophagy upregulates, when it happens more. Um, we can assume, we can infer that the longer you go fasting, the more it's going to happen. Um, and, and the reason a lot of people do the 16, eight style of, of, like I said, I don't like the phrase intermittent fasting, but eating twice a day, time restricted eating, um, is because it seems to happen at about the 16 hour mark or maybe between the 12 and 16 hour mark. So that's like the sweet spot to at least have a little bit of that happening or more than is happening when you're constantly in the fed state, if you're eating and snacking all day. Um, so you do want to go some time without eating to allow this to happen. But I think that self repair, self eating happens all the time. And I, I, I really want to say again, like I said in the first video, you don't have to fast. No one has to fast. Everybody can fast with the exceptions I used in the previous video. Most people can fast if they have a reason to, if they have a noticeable physical or mental or emotional health benefit from it, you can fast, but don't feel like a failure if you don't want to, or you don't like it. And I don't think anyone is giving themselves cancer by not fasting. Um, I don't think eating three meals a day is what's causing cancer. Again, I don't know. I'm just a nutritionist, you know, but um, I don't think you should feel like, you know, just because fasting might have a role in a cancer therapy doesn't mean that not fasting causes cancer. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, so use fasting like any other tool, use it like keto, use it like MCT oil, use it like exercise. Um, all of this has a role, but there's, there's a proper way to do it and, and not everybody needs it. I mean, everybody needs some type of physical activity. Not everyone needs dedicated exercise at the gym. Um, you know what I mean? All of these different things are just parts of the strategy that can help. Um, but some people notice more of a benefit than others. And there's many, many different ways to be successful on keto. Fasting can be part of keto. If you want to do it, it doesn't have to be part of keto and you can do just fine. So again, um, all right, 12 and a half minutes. Good. Finishing up before 20 minutes. Um, Thanks for watching. This is going to be it on fasting for now. Um, hopefully I'll, I'll, I'll move on to some more topics next time. And again, if you like these videos, if they're helpful, please subscribe to the channel. And my blog is to at nutrition.com. Like I said last time, I don't have Patreon, but every video that I make is, is, you know, unpaid time. The microphone I bought, the camera I bought, the time I spend doing it, it's unpaid time. So if you feel that these are beneficial, feel free to send a couple of bucks my way via PayPal, um, paypal.com. You can send it to my email address, tuitnutrition.com, T-U-I-T nutrition.com. Buy me a cup of coffee, buy me a bag of pork rinds. It's all good. Thanks so much. I'll see you next time.